Living with the host family in Guatemala may raise many questions for you. What will I eat? Where will I sleep? Who is my family? Will I have privacy? What will I do after work? This video is meant to provide you with information to begin answering those questions and allow you to focus on your role in preparing to be a volunteer. All Peace Corps volunteers serving in Guatemala live with host families for the duration of their service, including pre-service training. Living with the host family provides the volunteer many benefits, including opportunities for community integration, continued development of language skills, and understanding of local cultural norms. The host family serves as an additional support network in the community, providing the volunteer with a connection to the community and advice to maintain their personal safety and security throughout service. Peace Corps invests a considerable amount of time and resources to select and train families to host volunteers. It is important that the family share the agency's values and expectations. The host family development process is ongoing, starting many months before a volunteer arrives and continuing throughout service to ensure a living situation that will enable you to stay healthy and safe. Things to keep in mind. All PCVs in Guatemala are required to live with a host family, either in a house or family compound during their entire service. All host families have been visited and approved by Peace Corps staff in order to determine that the housing meets Peace Corps' established safety criteria and that the family will provide a positive environment for the volunteer. After swearing in and being assigned to a site, all volunteers pay for their rent from their monthly living allowance and work with the family to determine how they will handle meals, laundry, and utilities. Families will provide the volunteer with a private space and a locking door for their bedroom. As a volunteer, you are expected to share the American culture with Guatemalans at the same time that you learn and respect theirs. It is important to pay special attention to family norms and expectations, including entering the residence, manners during meals, and addressing community members. These customs and norms may vary considerably from yours at home, but for them, respect will be key to building a long-lasting, respectful relationship with your family. Remember that integration is a key to your success as a volunteer. It is natural to feel homesick or miss things from your everyday life in the United States. But spending time with your host family and community members will help you develop new friendships to ease the change. Tolerance and comprehension of the host culture and family situation can go a long way to helping to build trust, or what we call in Guatemala, confianza. <laughs> When an uncomfortable situation happens, remember that Peace Corps will support you in any way possible to help you explore ways to resolve the situation. A staff member is a phone call or a drive away. Situations that impact your health or personal security should be reported directly to Peace Corps staff as soon as possible so that the appropriate assistance may be provided. In Guatemala, the treatment and relationships with animals can be quite distinct to that of the United States. In some communities, animals are seen for their utility and not as companions. For example, in many homes, dogs are kept as guard dogs to deter intruders and they are not allowed inside the home. It is important to understand that a pet implies a financial responsibility and volunteers are not provided with any additional financial assistance for pet care. If you're interested in having a pet, you may explore that option after you have completed six months of service. It is important to discuss this at length with your host family to understand the house norms around your potential pet. In many rural communities, modern flush toilets can be rare and pit latrines or outhouses may be the bathroom option. Additionally, in many communities, bathing is done through a bucket bath instead of a shower. In some of the communities, 
Families use a traditional temescal or steam bathe for bathing. One thing is for sure, you will encounter a lot of new situations. Some may prove to be very challenging and others a fun new experience. The key to adapting is openness to new experiences and using your cross-cultural and communication skills to navigate the adaptation process. Peace Corps is a 24-7 job in which you are a representative of the American people to Guatemalans. Every volunteer is expected to uphold the vision and ideals of Peace Corps through their work, behavior, and community interactions. Peace Corps provides clear expectations of volunteer conduct, but it is also important that you work to understand the household and community norms to ensure you do not damage your standing in the community. In the United States, you are used to your independence and the ability to separate your work life from your personal life. In Peace Corps, the two worlds will blur, and this will have an impact on how you spend your free time, where you go, and how you interact with different community members. This may be the first time in a number of years that you have lived in a shared space with a family. It will be important to communicate with your family and do things like asking for permission to have visitors to the house and agree upon what areas of the house they will access. Among the many adjustments you will need to undertake, your diet will come up amongst the first. You may be a vegetarian, have food allergies, or have certain preferred foods in the United States. Guatemalans typically eat a fairly consistent diet and at almost every meal, you will find corn either patted out into small tortillas or steamed in corn husk as small tamalitos. It is important for you to have open communication with your family to discuss your food limitations, but at the same time be flexible and try new things. It is likely your daily diet will be dictated by what is available in the local market, and you will need to adapt to incorporate more traditional foods into your menu. The bottom line is that every volunteer's experience is different and bound to have its ups and downs. Good communication and realistic expectations are key to getting the most out of host family relationships. <laughs> Apo Mac, Utsipetik Poatinamit, Bashil Kayala. Buenas tardes, jóvenes y señoritas, aspirantes a voluntario de Cuerpo de Paz, sean bienvenidos a Guatemala. In the next section, you will hear from volunteers and their host families about living together, facing challenges, and how they work through those challenges. So, this is my Guatemalan family. Um, I love them very much. Something that I would, I would recommend is to, to keep an open mind and to be as flexible as possible um, when you are getting your housing assignment and your first, uh, your first trip there. A lot of times it's, it's somewhat of a shock once you get to, to your site um, and once you, once you realize that you're going to be living in this one spot for the next two years. Um, but you know, it's something that, that everyone gets used to if you, if you are flexible. Here in Guatemala, I think I said before, I have around 15 people that live in the house with me. Okay, so I have my grandparents, Doña Maria and Don Juan. Their son, Don Jose Obispo, and his wife, Doña Santa. Their son, Don Juan, his wife, Estela. Their son, Mario. Then I have my aunt, Doña Patrona, and her husband, Don Jose. Then they have their four daughters are Rosa, Olga, Patricia, Maria, and then my other aunt and uncle are Don Domingo and Doña Maria. Um, so there's always someone around to talk to. Um, I think in this situation where I am now, I always have to initiate the conversation, but it's been really great because even though sometimes you feel really lonely as a Peace Corps volunteer, having all of these different people that are available throughout the day, you can just go next door and be like, hey, what's going on? And you'll, you'll end up having this great conversation with your host mom or your host grandma or your cousins or whoever might be in the house. Todos somos iguales. Todos, aunque ellos son americanos, pero todos somos iguales. Les damos la bienvenida, que no temen, que están bien recibidos aquí en nuestras aldeas. There were some things that I considered annoying. For example, uh, certain churches have their prayers over loudspeakers. That was, uh, that, 
uh, it took a while to get used to, maybe a month, a month and a half. After a while, I just filtered it out. Another thing is I'm not uh, used to having so many children playing outside and every once in a while they come and knock on your door. Uh, either they ask you to play with them or they ask you for help with their homework, whether it's math or English or whatever it is. Um, well, welcome to Guatemala, to all of the future trainees. And uh, it's a beautiful culture here. Um, there's a lot of differences. I live in the Occidente where the Mayan culture is. And for me, it's been a real pleasure living um, with Mayans. My living situation, there's about 10 other teachers as well as the family. So it's a pretty, pretty exciting place to live. There's always a lot of energy and things going on. So I live in my own separate room with a private bath, with a half bath, which is really nice because it gives me privacy, of course. And at the same time, I'm able to integrate and um, interact with the family like whenever I want to which is certainly very nice to help in Spanish and uh, becoming accustomed to the community finding out what's going on making friends les enseñé un poco de cada cosa para que aprendan ellos también como es la costumbre indígena o en los pueblos pues pues les enseñé a traer pan los llevé al molino a las, a las muchachas pues les enseñé cómo llevar el, el huacal de Ixtamal en la cabeza. Because you need to speak to your family face to face. You have to ask them what they want from you. So I had to learn what they were expecting from me as far as what hour I should come home or why they were worried about me. Because most of us don't even think to actually have to answer to somebody. So we sat down at dinner a couple times and you're gonna make mistakes. I've made several mistakes with my host family, but the, the more important lesson that you have to learn is that you can keep talking to them about what you expect of them and what they expect of you. So you have to, to really talk to them about it. Eh, solo quiero decirles que tengan confianza en la gente donde vayan a vivir, en especial eh, la familia o en las familias donde vayan a vivir. Pues yo creo que es una situación en la que ustedes, pues, Eh, sufren una eh, diferencia de, de cultura, de vida y pues yo quisiera decirles que se integren, que no tengan pena de, de decir lo que necesitan, lo que no les gusta, así pues eh, se pueden mejorar las cosas o la convivencia con la familia y no tengan pena, acudan a la persona que se les indicó para cualquier necesidad y entonces eh, así pues ustedes pueden tener una vida mejor. Cualquier cosa que tengan, digan. Cualquier cosa que necesitan, digan. Porque solo hablando, pues, creo que se va a entender muy bien con la familia. Así que échenle ganas y bienvenidos a Guatemala. Gracias. Tuve una voluntaria que me quebró la ventana y lo tuve que componer. Otro que quebró un gas neón, también lo repuse. Um, and another challenge that I face on a daily basis are fleas um, because there are a lot of stray dogs in Guatemala. Uh, there's not a lot of neutering or spaying of pets. Before I got here, I didn't know what to expect. I only sort of expected a, a more humble setting, maybe one or two small buildings, and that was about it. But when I got here, I realized that families live close together. Allow yourself to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. There's going to be cultural aspects that you don't understand. There's going to be things that your family doesn't understand of you. Start every day new. Start every day fresh so that you don't carry on. Like, you might have had a, a fight with your host family the day before, but start the next day with a clean slate because this isn't an easy situation. It isn't easy to live with a family that has you and you both have different cultural aspects, cultural experiences. Um, keep an open mind as far as what your house is going to be like, um, the conditions around your house and your host family, because a lot of people have really, really good host families, and some have other host families that maybe are not as, um, not as outgoing, not as inviting, and that's fine as well. They're just different. So you're not really going to know um, what your situation is going to be like until you get to site. Um, but everyone that I've talked to, almost everyone's been able to make the best of, of their housing situation. Um, and a lot of times it's, it's the more humble houses that really give you the better, not better, but it, it give you like the real Peace Corps experience um, as far as 
um, living with your host family, integrating with your host family. Um, if you have to share a kitchen with them, obviously, it's going to allow you to spend a lot more time with them and, and get to know them better and have them get to know you a little bit better. One thing that's extremely difficult with having a dog is tra uh, traveling in, this, in the camionetas because I'm trying to bring all my stuff as I'm carrying a dog and the people on the buses are scared because they think that the dog is gonna bite, they think the dog is dirty, that he's carrying pulgas. Um, and so there's just a lot more stress into having a pet here in Guatemala. But no matter what your site is like, no matter what your housing situation is like, if you make the best of it, if you're, you really make that effort to integrate with your host family and with your, with your community, then your, your two years of service is gonna be so much more, um, it's just gonna be so much more uh, beneficial not only for you but for the community as well. Um, doing laundry by hand, that's another challenge, especially during the rainy season. And uh, in the wet months, sometimes there is a mold problem, which can cause respiratory discomfort. But, um, you know, you chloro everything or you bleach everything once or twice. Um, a month. Okay, <laughs> so one thing that I've learned from the Guatemalan culture that I think I'll try to carry on in the U.S. is how they greet everybody that they go by on the street. Oh, there were times where there was not very much water and I was thinking bucket baths, um, which you know some Peace Corps volunteers do as a matter of course. So something that I had to do was really make an effort to leave my house, go down, um, spend time with the family, um, play with the kids and I try to I try to do that at least at least for an hour every single day My advice for volunteers would be when anything happens in their lives That's very upsetting or that angers them to be calm To relax and to give themselves give themselves a few days or pass possibly weeks to figure out how they feel and what the consequences of any actions they take could be because Living in Guatemala as a foreigner, our, our actions are looked upon a little bit more closely than other Guatemalans, possibly. And so anything that you do might have severe consequences in the community.